Welcome to Bamford Rose and another question of the week. This week is picking up a question that comes off the back of the dyno testing video that I did with Steve over at Aston 1936. And this question is specifically about the V8 and dyno testing the V8 because the video that I shot with Steve talking about dyno testing and concerns relating to the validity of the results from dyno testings was all focused about V12s. If you haven't checked out that video, then go and watch it. If you just want the edited summary, then the summary is don't bother dyno testing, go and buy something like a draggy and do your before measurements, then do your after measurements with the draggy and that way you can prove that your upgrades have been worthwhile rather than a dyno which comes with a whole heap of inaccuracies that are introduced by dyno testing. So the question is, does the V8 suffer from such inaccuracies on dyno testing? And the answer is yes, for two reasons. One is, well, it's dyno testing and all of the input errors that we went through um, in ambient air temperature, pressure, and temperatures affecting the wheel result and how you back calculate from wheel to flywheel, well, they equally exist in the case of dyno testing a V8 engine. But most V8 models have something which V12 doesn't, which is its knock control and spark strategy, which is designed to return as much ignition as possible, therefore as much power as possible. And depending on when you did your power curve and power test, you could actually have a different level of ignition advance, therefore a different power figure. So we're just gonna talk about those subtleties on the V8 in this video. I did all of the performance development for the 380 and 420 BHP 4.3 and 4.7 litre engines for the factory. So I know what I'm talking about here. Reference conditions for the V8 that the ignition has been mapped at are 25 degree inlet manifold temperature and something like a 97, 99 octane fuel. Those inputs will dictate an ignition advance angle before the engine starts to detonate. And it's that ignition angle which will be in the base ignition map. So every time you run the car through the gears, if there is no detonation, then the engine will run the base spark value and the performance will be the most optimum it can be. Perhaps if the ambient air temperature was a bit hot, fuel octane was a bit low, then an engine might start to detonate. And if it detonates, then knock control, which is a system where a sensor feedbacks to the ECU that detonation is occurring, and then the ECU backs off a little bit of spark to counter that detonation so it doesn't occur, and then it will learn that spark as an adaptive offset so that no detonation occurs. That's great because we don't want detonation because that will lead to a hole in the piston, but it's not so great because if the ignition is retarded, then the power is gonna be a little bit less. For N400 and the Aston Martin Power Upgrade Kit, which was retrospectively sold to 4.3s, I developed a little bit of a software algorithm that turns that traditional behavior on its head. This algorithm will actually advance the spark and seek out detonation. It then learns that positive adaptive offset as its base ignition value, which means that at all times, every single engine is running the most amount of spark that it possibly could. But at the same time that is going on, you've also got adjustments that will be made due to certain outside conditions like ambient pressure, temperature. And whilst that strategy is trying to advance the spark to give the most amount of power, those normal reductions that I just spoke about are always going to try and reduce the spark. What that means is that the engine is always running the most amount of spark at all times that it possibly could, and it's achieving the most amount of power at all times that it possibly could. But what that also means is where spark has to be adjusted, then it's going to have a reduction in power. So if you've got the V8 on the dyno and you're running say five back-to-back -back power runs, if that system is working, you could have five different spark curves across the rev range, meaning you've got five 
different power figures. When I do dyno testing on a VA, I turn all of those features off. I run a set spark curve. That way I know that my result is not being compromised, not being adjusted by any spark offset. If I didn't do that, then my figures, my results could be skewed and my result is unreliable. So if you're dyno testing your V8 and you are not measuring through the engine management system these inputs and you're also not resetting your spark so it is fixed without any of those adaptive offsets taking control means the result isn't really worth much and goes back to the example of the draggy being the best tangible measurement of your pre and post modification results. We're gonna go out in a car now and I'm gonna show you this system working. And you'll see that as we go through the rev range, then the spark is continually adjusting. At 7,000 RPM, one degree spark is worth about 3.5 brake horsepower. You'll see that this system has got authority to remove up to five degrees spark, which ultimately means power output can vary dyno test to dyno test by at least 15 brake horsepower. So this first acceleration shows that the adaptive not control offset is doing absolutely nothing during this first acceleration, meaning that the spark value is the maximum from the base map, meaning that the power output is the maximum possible. Now this second run, we've heat soaked some temperature into the engine, we've done a few accelerations and we've actually now detected some detonation through the onboard knock control system. As you can see that's returning a adaptive offset, it's called the slow correction. And as you can see there is up to 5 degrees going in that slow correction adaptive offset, which means the power run that we just did is anything in the order of 15 bhp lower than the reference. Draggy is the answer. Hope you liked that question of the week. As always, it really helps us if you can like, comment and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next question of the week.